for it, Jenny. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this Google Hangout on the air. My name is Jenny McGarra, and I'm the Digital Learning Coordinator for a network of 29 Chicago public schools called the Academy for Urban School Leadership. And I am Chad Kafka. I am a tech coach in the Franklin Public School District, which is just south of Milwaukee, uh, also a Google certified teacher. And we're here today to kind of introduce you to Connected Educator Month and uh, how to set up a Google Plus account so that you can participate in some great things that are going on online. So Jenny's going to go ahead and explain a little bit of that. So we're so excited. Uh, this is going to be the second year that the U.S. Department of Education is presenting Connected Educators Month. If you're not familiar with what Connected Educators Month is, it is a month-long celebration of getting uh, different teachers and educators and education stakeholders connected to one another and to resources. On um, you can find out more to connectededucators.org, and I'll share my screen so you can see what it looks like. Um, but we also today are going to show you another way that you can find out more and get involved in this amazing month-long celebration of uh, digital learning and connection um, by using Google+. Was that, was that my segue? Am I supposed to go? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, my turn. Start segue here. <laughs> no, my turn. So uh, let me pull up. I'm going to pull up a totally blank window here, and I'm going to screen share. And we're going to show now how to use your account as a uh, use your Google account rather as a Google Plus account. So, if you have a Google account, if you don't have a Google account, anyone can go to Google.com and click uh, sign in, or you can head to um, head, head to I believe it's about Google, and that'll take you to the place where you can create an account. We're going to assume that if you're watching this, you have a Google account. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in with the Google account and show how to upgrade to Google Plus. So he's <laughs> Tony Start. Nice job. I do appreciate that email there account. There you go. So. Uh, so now I'm signed in as Tony Stark. So when you sign in with a Google account, I'm going to try your pinch to zoom thing here and see if this works. There we go. You need to talk to whoever manages your Google domain because they have to turn on the ability for you to have access to Google+. Um, and that's just a very simple thing they can do in the uh, in the administrator area. Uh, with students, it, the, the thing with Google+, Plus is that students that are 13 or under, uh, legally can't use Google Plus right now, so uh, this does need to, this can be turned on for staff and still be turned off for students. You just have to talk to your IT people about that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Plus U, and this takes me to the three steps. There's three steps here on the left side to turn on my Google Plus account. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out really quick here. Again, the date is listed here for your birth date, just to make sure that you are uh, older than 13. So we're going to put that. And I'm going to click Upgrade. This is going to take me to step number two. As you join Google+, very similar if you've used Facebook or Twitter before, uh, there will be some recommendations here for people you might know. I'm going to go ahead and type in some people that I know. And you can skip this step if you're trying to just get through so that you can use the features of Google+, and you're not sure who you want to be friends with yes. yet. You can always click that blue Continue button at the bottom. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, this, I'm just doing this just to show how to do it. But yeah, you can just skip this. And I always get do get questions from teachers. What do I do here? What do I do here? You can always continue on. I'm just going to add one here just to show what it looks like. So uh, when you do add people, you circle them or they get, they get added to a circle. So I added uh, this person uh, in my friends group or family or acquaintances. Or you can create a circle if you're working with a certain team and you want to make a circle for that team. Circles help you just to kind of organize your friends or acquaintances uh, kind of into a group. So I'm going to hit continue. And Chad, you can add people to more than one circle, right? Yeah, definitely. So I could add somebody to a work group and also my uh, six, eight language arts team if I made a circle for that. And your fantasy football group. Exactly. And your... <laughs> yep. yep. So here, step two also gives you some different recommendations, suggestions for things to follow, things you might be interested in. Again, you can scroll through these, and if you like it, you can click follow. Those those uh, the posts from those, uh, I guess, businesses or um, people will show up in your feed. Again, if you don't want to do this, like Jenny said, you can just click continue just to advance through this quickly. You'll get a nice little note from Google about how you might be lonely, so you can go back and add people or just click continue just to move on. 
The third step is uh, just kind of creating your profile so you can take a picture from your computer or if you upload an image, and I happen to have one here on my desktop that I'll go grab real quick that Jenny will also appreciate. This is really exciting. I love all these fun surprises. <laughs> so there's nice. my profile. I can put, that'll be my little picture. Uh, I can rotate. And for, and for those of you who are watching this and are worried about digital uh, citizenship and copyright, <laughs> Chad actually took that picture, so this is okay. That is true. This was at an actual event where they had some of the costumes from the movie, so totally not breaking copyright by doing that. So there's my headshot. Uh, you can put in where you work. I do recommend putting in um, where you work, especially if you're in a school district. It's easier for, for colleagues to find you if you start networking with your uh, colleagues through Google+. I'm going to go ahead and just click Finish just to get through this a little quicker. So that is creating the account. Uh, when you get in, you might get some little messages that kind of give you a, a tour of Google+, and how it works. We'll cover a little bit of that right now. Um, so I'm just going to I'm going to click through these as if I was a new user. It's telling me that I can mouse over this home area of the Google Plus page and this little side menu opens up allows me to navigate to some different areas within Google Plus. We're going to talk about communities here in a minute. If I click next, uh, it tells me then on the right side is Hangouts. If I mouse over or click on Hangouts, this is where I can do some text chats or some video chats uh, with other people that I've that I'm communicating with through Google Plus. I'm going to click next. Uh, your photos. Photos is a really popular area. There's a lot of great features with Google Plus Photos. So if you upload photos, uh, you can do some special effects to them and organize them into albums and, and just enhance them uh, in all different ways. So that is kind of... And a lot of times... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, people like to skip those product tours when you get into sites. Um, it's okay to skip the profile creation and adding friends because you can always go back and do that. But usually the product tour, um, I, I also move too fast, but that's a great place to just like slow down a minute and go through it because you will find later, how do I find the menu? Because if you notice now, that left-hand navigation bar is gone. And if you had skipped over that, uh, that product tour real quick, you would know that you could do that you could do what Chad's doing right now which is hovering over that home button and then seeing that um, you the, the navigation pops back up. So, so do take the product tour. You can skip adding friends. You can go ahead and be lonely. Uh, you don't have to put up a picture of yourself, but take the tour. Yeah. Um, so, but speaking of the different areas of the site, Chad did mention communities, and we wanted to show you an example community. So going back to Connected Educators Month, we had shown you the official page, which is this one, connecteducators.org. But um, we, if you want to get involved and go into a dynamic site where you could talk about Connected Educators Month, ask questions to people who are participating in it, and say, hey, what is it? How do I get involved? What do I do? Share resources. Then it would be nice to be part of a community. And, uh, uh, this is the Google Plus community for Connected Educator Month facilitators. And anyone could be a Connected Educator Month facilitator. So if you're wondering, is that me? Yes, it is you. It could be anyone at all. So please <laughs> do join this community. Um, you don't need to be a principal or an official school leader. Any educator can, can create or facilitate an event. Um, and so Chad's going to take you on a tour of this community and how to find it now. So as Jenny mentioned, when I mouse over this home area up here on the left side, if you go down, here's communities. So I'm going to click on communities, and I'm actually, I did that while Jenny was talking, so I'm actually already there. Uh, over here is a search bar specifically to search for communities. So I'm just going to type in CEM for Connected Educator Month. We're going to do CEM 2013. And it happens to be the first community that pops up. This is what the logo looks like, and if you click through, this takes you to the community. So this is what Jenny was just showing. Um, myself being here as Tony Stark, as a brand new user, I see the red Join Community button up here, so I can click on Join Community. And I am now, now Tony Stark is part of the community. <laughs> we'll leave that out. We'll leave that out there and see if anyone says anything. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited. Right, there you go. So when you do join a community, um, just kind of looking at this, you probably saw there's different posts here. So there, here's a few, po a few posts by Jenny where she was sharing some different information. One of the nice things about Google Plus is just the way this all flows visually. So this is kind of like a feed um, that you can just scroll down. You can see where the different posts are. They just they, There's usually about two or three columns depending on how big your screen size is. 
is. Um, you can read the posts. If it links out to something else, there might be something you can click on. So here she linked up something and said, nominate a connected educator as a White House champion of change. You could click through to that and find out what that is. Uh, here she has the connected educator theme presentation proposal. If I were to click that, that'll open as, a, as its own window. It looks like it's a form that one can fill out um, for, uh, what, what is this form for exactly, Jenny? Go ahead and explain it a little bit here. I'll make it bigger on my screen. So if you want to do, a, we're also looking for presentations and people who are going to present about themes. So if you'd like to do a, a, a presentation and there are six themes for Connected Educator Month, then you can go ahead and submit something so that you could be a presenter during the month. Um, but I think the biggest call to action, if you go back to our community page, Chad, yep. um, is to... And I'll also uh, navigate to it because I'm not sure what you guys are seeing right now. And you might be seeing my image since I'm talking. Uh, but is to the first uh, resource that I have here, which is add an event. And that's what we're really trying to get people to do now is to add their events to the calendar. And a lot of times people hear the word event and they shy away. They think, well, I'm not running a conference or an ed camp or a webinar. But if you scroll down, you see in type of event, um, it's really anything. So it could be a book club, it could be a blog or forum discussion, you can see it says call to action, um, it could be a Twitter chat or a podcast, a poll, it could be open, your open house, anything at all that you think uh, would help people learn more about being connected, digital learning, connecting with other educators, online resources, anything at all. And don't worry about the fact that this is a national site because uh, people are going to look at it and say, that looks like a fabulous event in Boise, Idaho, but I'm here in Seattle, Washington, and I don't think I'm going to be flying out there. But it's just great for people to see how, uh, the myriad of amazing connected events that are happening around our nation and to hear these edgy winds of fabulous things that are going around around the country. So please submit an event um, on here. Don't be shy. Submit early. Submit often, like Chicago voting rules, um, and, and share what you're doing. So you could get to that right from the community page. It's the first tile, and if by the time you see this Google Hangout um, and it's no longer there, it's buried, you could always click on Resources category here, and uh, Submit an Event is right here as well. That is something that's good to point out is this does work very similar to Facebook where if I wanted to add more information or reply to a comment that someone had left, you can click on Add Comments, and woohoo. Tony Stark, Jenny, replying to you right there. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, so you can respond to these posts. It looks like we have 175 community members already. I'm just looking to grow that and just share ideas, share out what everybody's doing, and uh, do all this as we build towards October and go through October as Connected Educator Month. So that is Google Plus, uh, getting in, getting into a community, and, and kind of getting yourself uh, familiar with the surroundings. Please, uh, please jump on to Google+, create an account, join the C uh, CEM 2013 facilitator community um, today. We're really excited to see that number jump from 175 to 1,175 because obviously there's 1,000 people watching this Hangout. Um, but we really, that's going to be the place to get information, interact with other connected educators, and learn more. So we're really excited to see everyone on, and um, that's not the only place we can interact on Google+, but we certainly would love to see you there. And that's it for this uh, Hangout on Air. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Thank you.